It's Benjamin Ray here with another edition of Sustainability Live. Uh, today, my guest uh, had something come up, and it's completely understandable, but I've committed to 90 days of live videos here at uh, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So the show must go on. Now, in this episode here, I'm going to talk about sustainability, and that's in a lot of different forms, but primarily it's around reducing plastic waste and discarded packages. Uh, being here at Tread Global, uh, we do make packages for the cannabis industry. We work on sustainability, but there is still some element of plastic. And so we work with our customers on alternatives, paper, uh, tin, glass, but there's still this pervasive use of plastics in American society. And for the past 70 years, you know, Americans here have really been into single use plastic. And it's a little ironic now because we are talking about reducing plastic waste, but my career has been in advertising and marketing. And 60 years ago, we were the ones who, who said to Americans, you absolutely have to embrace this throwaway culture. So it is ironic now that we as leaders can get the word out to influence others. But in the time of this show right here, um, we, we are discarding or there will be discarded 5 million plastic bottles will be discarded in the next 10 or 15 minutes. And that happens all around the world. And to put that in perspective, for the last 70 years, we have thrown away 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic. Now, what does actually that mean? What does that relate to? So what that would be is if we took all of those plastic packages, waste, extra stuff, put it in one big giant plastic bag, well, you know what else would fit in there would be the earth. So when I think about it that way, I'm like, wow, you know, there's got to be something that we can do about this. And I recently got into kind of this, you know, embracing what can we do about this over the past year. It was about, I'd say it was probably about eight months ago. And I was talking uh, with Ron from Santa Packaging, who we do work with. And my perspective in our conversation was that it was the consumers who could do something about it, that consumers have choice. They can choose to, you know, use less plastic, use reusable bags, seek alternatives. And he, his argument or perspective was, no, it's the company's perspective. So I started getting into that, which company? Is it the manufacturers? Where is it along the supply chain? Is it the retail? Is it who makes the, the containers? And so that really started me on this path of talking to a lot of people about whose responsibility is it and where do we start? Where do we start to you know, address the challenge of reducing plastic waste specifically in packaging. So I started looking all around, you know, going around my house uh, with coronavirus throughout this year, you know, we had more time to, to be around, do more walks, take more time, be more aware. And on the positive side, that was nice. But on the negative side, I saw a lot of trash that was just discarded on the street. And I've done a lot of videos over the past six months about that, about just packaging waste and people throwing package packages on the ground, you know? I mean, what does it take to keep that, to look for a trash can? A lot of people don't. We still are a disposable society. So that got me thinking, okay, how do we actually attack this? Who's gonna start it? And I realized that it is a very, very big problem, huge problem. And everybody really does wanna do something about it. So the common enemy is packaging waste. And if we keep on this path, we're gonna have way more earths to fill with packaging waste than we know what to do with. And it's starting to become that way in the oceans. In fact, it has been for a long time, but it's getting worse every single day. So who is responsible? Is it consumers? Is it manufacturers? It's all of us. And it's gonna take a lot of innovation. It's gonna take R&D. It's gonna take science. It's gonna take startups. It's going to take people who are, who are fed up and say, I am not going to do plastic anymore. I am going to look at all other alternatives. And so we're all responsible for it. Now, this is a tremendous opportunity for the C-suite to step up and say, we're going to do something about it. 
not just because it's the right thing to do, because it's great for the bottom line. It's good, you know, for PR. It's good for to get new customers who will align with your brand. And that's on the, the role of the marketer. So marketers, as well as others involved, the scientists, the innovators, are the ones who are going to start this conversation. Now, it takes more than conversation. It takes actual action to do something about it. And I'm learning through these conversations that I'm having on live that there are some very passionate, concerned people who want to do something about it. And through these conversations, I've been learning about different uh, companies that are trying to make a difference, but it's still more expensive. And that's one of the big challenges is that Americans in general won't spend more than 10% on anything that, that's more expensive, whether it's made in the US, whether it's organic, whether it's biodegradable or sustainable, Americans just don't do that. And I've realized that over the past 10 years working on different projects and you know doing a lot of surveys about what that is. And now there is a, a, a small minority of people who will, who will spend more money. And many of those people have been on this show, but it is a very small minority. So the research that I've done and the people that I've talked to, it really comes down to costing less. That's what it needs to be is it needs to cost a lot less to have sustainable packaging, to get the mainstream to invest in it. Because if marketers are spending all of their money on educating people as to why it's good, then that money is primarily going to be wasted. You know, my perspective is that marketers need to spend time talking about the companies that are actually doing a good job at coming up with sustainable options, but that are less expensive. So Mainstream doesn't have to think about it. You don't have to think, wow, am I going to spend 10 more cents uh, for this over a dollar? Mm, probably not. It's really not worth it to me. You know how a lot of people think with, with their pocketbooks, which is understandable. So we need to be super innovative over the next two, five years, however long, 10 years, 20 years, right? Starting now to come up with ideas where we can greatly reduce, greatly reduce the price of sustainable packaging. And I'm maintaining that it needs to be half. It needs to be half of what other packages cost before it truly can be disruptive. And once that's the case, we won't even think about it. All the plastic waste won't even be an option if we can come up with other options that are less expensive. Now, currently glass is not less expensive. Paper is not less expensive. Tin is not more expensive. But there are some biocomposites, some bio um, uh, innovations that potentially will cost less and absolutely have no harm to the environment. And that's where a lot of research needs to go into is where, where do you spend the money actually to be able to be innovative enough to come up with solutions that are going to work for the mainstream. So my challenge over the next year is for the C-suite to truly innovate not just have lip service, not just do greenwashing, but truly innovate and say, how can we invest in technologies that will be here for the next 50 years, the next 100 years, the next 200 years, as some futurists are actually planning on now is, you know, think way ahead. How are we going to be truly disruptive? And so I maintain and challenge the C-suite to be innovative and use this time as an opportunity, an opportunity to research, invest, talk about what you're doing, corporate social responsibility, have a sustainability, a chief sustainability officer on your team. It's time. It's time we do something about it. You know, the 70 past 70 years have all been about plastic. And I grew up, I grew up in the era of plastic, everything. You know, my parents always taught me to pick up trash. And I can't think of a time in my life that I ever just threw something on the ground. You know, that was completely ingrained in my thoughts. And, but a lot of people didn't grow up that way. And so a lot of my posts have been about teaching your children about the benefits of throwing trash away, picking up trash, you know, investing in your thought process around using sustainable products, what that means. And so that's what I'm doing here on these 
videos, these live videos, are interviewing kind of leaders and innovators and people who live sustainably. And that doesn't necessarily mean they're a sustainability expert, but living sustainably means that you care about the future and you care about your grandchildren, our grandchildren, and our grandchildren's grandchildren. And we are going to be investing the time in those technologies about thinking about thinking thinking about things that will be there in the future when we are long gone. And that's legacy. So I challenge all of you to think differently about that. So if any of you have any questions, you can reach out to me. You can send me a direct message here on LinkedIn. I'm happy to talk about this. If you'd like to be on this show, I'd be happy to interview you and get this conversation going. Check in with me next week, this time, 10 a.m. Mountain, 12 Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. I've got a full book out Monday through Friday of some great leaders in the industry, around the industry, talking about sustainability and how it affects their business. So I welcome you to join me. And thanks. Have an amazing weekend. And we'll talk to you soon.